Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of April 5th, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, without a doubt, this is one of the more intense windows that we are going to have when I reflect on 2020. And that's not easy to say. We have very powerful astrology playing out over the course of this year. Astrologers have been talking about the astrology of 2020 for years. I definitely have been as well uh, since 2018 even and 2019 year ahead. I've been talking about how it is that it is this year that is changing us in powerful ways, helping to realign us and ultimately shift our consciousness in ultimately truly empowered ways. But it is this week where some of that peak energy is going to be felt that much more and the emphasis is on the feeling part of it. It is going to be this week that we have a super moon, but it isn't just the fact that we have a full moon that appears larger and more bright in the sky than it ordinarily might, but that this super moon happening in the sign of Libra, which has to do with connecting with others, communicating with others, those one-on-one -on -one alliances, genuine sharing is also going to be speaking in conversations of tension with Pluto and with Jupiter. Both Pluto and Jupiter are perfecting their connection right out of the gate as we start this week, depending on where you are on the planet. In some parts of the Americas, it's very, very late on Saturday, but for most of the world, this energy takes place on Sunday as we start this week. And it is this energy, not only of Jupiter connecting with Pluto, but the fact that the full moon is bringing an element of emotion and a more personal element to it, that is part of what is going to make it feel so important, make it feel larger. So let's talk about Jupiter and Pluto. These two planets will be dancing all year in orb, but there are three exact connections they will have. The first one is now. The next will be in June. And then the final will be in November. These planets connect every 14 years or so. And when it is that they do, it represents a time when we are looking at factors that feel big or powerful or maybe don't feel as fair. Pluto is, as I've spoken of before, um, the mythological underground the god of the underworld, Hades. And if you think about what happens underground, right? If you think about where it is that we go deep within, that's where we find the variety of what we are as human beings. We find the best, sure, there's a transformative quality to this energy, but we also find those parts of the human experience that feel unfair, that might even feel cruel. In the sign of Capricorn, it is Pluto that has been bringing our attention to structures, whether you wanna call them societal structures or global structures that are in place that can feel all encompassing and overpowering. Well, it is Jupiter now that is emphasizing or helping to not only bring attention, but helping it to feel as if this energy is that much more pervasive, that much bigger, that much more all encompassing. Jupiter can represent a healing energy, but as I've spoken of before, Jupiter in Capricorn um, isn't necessarily the easiest energy from which Jupiter can bring forward his higher, more optimistic, more healing qualities. Jupiter is expansive, right? It's an expansive energy and it grows whatever it is that is near it. And like Pluto representing the extremes of the human experience, so too can Pluto meeting Jupiter in the sky emphasize and highlight these very extremes. It's not easy for me to talk about because I know that as much as there are a lot of people out there who are going to experience this energy within, a lot of us out there are going to experience this in terms of our 
isolation that we're having right now, this sense of needing to be still, but more importantly, needing to look at ourselves deeply and intently, needing to understand what needs to heal within us, where it is that we've given over our power. I also want to acknowledge that there are going to be people who feel like there are external forces that can feel unfair at this time. But let me focus for a moment on the internal. Because I remember a spiritual mentor of mine many years ago, he said, whatever you hold in your mind, whatever thought it is, you know, it's, it's like an energetic meditation when you hold certain thoughts in your mind repeatedly, that is your God. And what he meant by that is it's one thing to sort of conceptualize and intellectualize what a higher power is to us, but it is ultimately what we choose to focus on that rules us, rules our energy, rules our life, that determines so much of our experience. And that isn't to say that there are not things that are, um, unfair or areas where it can feel as if there uh, are imbalances. But there's also that layer of our individual experience where we sometimes are not aware of that disconnect between the philosophical understanding of a higher power we have and what we're actually living and the actual practice of what our higher power, what a divine energy is to us, well, look at what you're thinking about all the time. Look at the thoughts you hold, right? It's like a, it becomes a mantra, if you will. It is that very thing that speaks to what part of divine energy we are accessing most. What we actually believe about higher power shows up in the energetic spaces that we dwell in. And that includes the energetic spaces of mind and emotion. Well, it is going to be this supermoon that ultimately brings this awareness to the surface, very likely through our interaction with another person. It is one-on-one -on -one alliances that can show us most powerfully who we are. And as I like to say, to see ourselves differently as reflected in the eyes of another. Now that doesn't mean you take someone else's opinion as your own. That doesn't mean you believe somebody else when they say something about who you are. It is about you observing yourself, your own reactions, the different parts of you that come forward as you interact with others. Libra is ultimately air energy. It's very mind oriented. And right about now, all of us are being asked to dwell in not only earth and stillness and presence, which is all very earthly energy like Jupiter meeting Pluto in the sky, but our communications and our interactions with others have certainly been relegated to spaces of air and communication through the online world in particular, this is the way in which we are cultivating connections with others and community now for much of the planet at this time. And so we've got this super moon. And if you think about a full moon, right, it brings emotion to the surface. It helps us to see the truth of what we really feel in the clear light of the full moon. And it makes our emotional truth undeniable. Now imagine that amplified. <laughs> imagine that turned up that much brighter. And imagine that truth coming about through our interactions with others, our projections onto others, our need to express, to communicate, to relate. All of that comes to the surface at this super moon and where it is that there have been uh, limitations or where it is that there are barriers to that within us where it is that it has felt painful to genuinely relate to another all of that can come to the surface at this time as well it is part of the work of healing to be willing to be able to look at ourselves more deeply, to understand the barriers we have to love 
and to transcend them. This is to paraphrase Marianne Williamson. That work that we do to transcend our barriers ultimately is the path towards greater love and greater wisdom. And it is now that we are being asked to do that work and how fitting that this is ultimately deeply personal and deeply private work. This is work that we can only do ourselves that really we can have other people who facilitate this understanding, whether that's professionally in terms of the counselors and the social workers and the psychoanalysts, you know, they're all, they're doing truly divine work in this world. So we have people like that who do that work, but then there is a point where, whether it is friendships who facilitate that or help us to facilitate that or certain partners, ultimately, the work is our own. No one can do that work for us to actually look and to transcend and to heal. And it is now, and especially when it is that we're interacting with others, that what that work is for us can feel especially acute. It can feel especially on the surface. We can feel that much more vulnerable at a time like this. And so, the promise and the potential now is to move forward beyond the vulnerability, to ask ourselves where it is that we are and what it is that we need so that we can move forward towards the genuine, not only connecting with others, but the genuine connection with ourselves, the peace within ourselves. What is it gonna take? What does it require? Those questions are tough to ask, but when we do, once we get to that point where we're even willing to ask the question, we've already begun to move towards the answer. The answer is already within reach. And so I would say, welcome this time, find acceptance in it as we are being asked to be still. Collectively, we are sharing this experience, yes, but the experience is highly individual. It is all our own and it is ultimately challenging all kinds of messages within us, societal messages, familial messages, and our own sense of the energetic spaces and places and thoughts that we repeat. But it is the challenge that is divine. This is what it means to be a spiritual warrior in many senses. It is that ability to look within and then move beyond to take that on as a sacred journey, the spiritual warrior path of self-honesty that makes us stronger and better than we ever knew ourselves to be before. Now, if all of this wasn't enough, under the same sky, right in the middle of this, first of all, Jupiter meeting Pluto in the sky right out of the gate as we start this week. And then we have that super moon that happens right around either late Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on where you are on the planet. Well, about 21 hours before that super moon perfects, we are going to have a connection between Mars and Uranus. And this is a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. It is one of tension. Now, imagine, if all of this wasn't enough, just Jupiter meeting Pluto is enough. And then the supermoon speaking to that conjunction adds that element of intensity and emotion. And then we have the randomness, the surprise, even the shock and the sense of um, developments, information, reactions coming out of nowhere that can show up now a sense of disruption that can show up now in the middle of it, well, it is ultimately there and it is designed as part of the perfection. Because remember, as I like to say, there is wisdom playing out, constant wisdom playing out, and that includes the order in which the celestial connections take place. So we have this connection and conversation characterized by randomness and erraticness happening in the middle of this profound emotional transcendence that we are experiencing in our individual journeys, but are united in this together. 
And so Mars right now is moving through the sign of Aquarius and Aquarius has to do with a few different things. I spoke about it at length in the Saturn special horoscope uh, here on YouTube in the 2020 decade ahead horoscope. I spoke about this as well. I'll be speaking about Aquarian energy quite a bit, I'm sure in the period ahead because it is going to become one of the more dominant energies on the planet uh, over the course of this decade and it's already begun. But Mars in this part of the sky. So Aquarius has to do with a few things. Yes, it has to do with um, humanitarian efforts. It has to do with our connections with other people, friendships, group endeavors. It is also connected to uh, technologies like the next wave of technologies and being connected to each other, which is why Aquarius is uh, often thought to be uh, corresponding to the internet, for example and the different tools that we use to connect in a more advanced way. So now imagine this energy of Mars in Aquarius speaking in tension with the ruling planet of Aquarius, Uranus. And Uranus is the great awakener as he's been called uh, by astrologers. He is an energy of shock and surprise and uh, events moving very quickly and seemingly out of nowhere. And this is energy of rebellion. This is energy of truth and authenticity. This is energy of revelation and epiphany. This can represent that collective leap of consciousness now that feels visceral, that feels embodied. Mars is an energy of the physical self, the physical body in a part of the sky, in an air sign that is about what has us elevating beyond the physical self. The energy of Aquarius, I think, therefore I am, that is very Aquarian. This idea that our mind and our intellect defines us is a great equalizer. And that's why we see in countries where there is dominant Aquarian energy in the country's charts, we tend to see greater access to education as an equalizing factor in a society. And so we have Mars and this notion of ideas and an energy of rebellion and being uh, adamantly independent and yet being a part of the collective and a collective experience, speaking with an energy of things moving very quickly, changing very quickly, for some frustrating, for some there may be reactions as well. So I see this energy playing out a couple of different ways. We are going to have to be mindful of technologies right about now. If you remember last week I spoke about how we may start to see these tools that we're using some very important security issues showing up in these particular uh, tools, some privacy issues showing up. But in a more practical way, we can also think about the tools that we use to be connected online, for example, very likely uh, to go wonky right about now. And that happens, right? Sometimes it isn't of a huge consequence when it is that there are little technical glitches. Sometimes it can feel a whole lot bigger. And right about now, Mars in square to Uranus can feel very big very quickly it doesn't necessarily have the kind of pervasive staying power like Jupiter meeting Pluto, for example, uh, but it doesn't mean that the immediate experience isn't felt. And this may be something that's felt by a lot of people. Now I would add, as I spoke about in the Uranus special horoscope, I've been here for a while. So of course I've been speaking about these things, right? But in the Uranus special horoscope, I spoke about how um, money and how we interact with money, how we understand money is going to go through a revolution. And this is where um, some of that is going to be a lot more evident and where there may also be some resistance to that showing up at this time. So we can expect matters related to how we interact with, how we handle uh, money, how we pay for things. Um, some of that could cause either confusion or uncertainty right about now. So 
just know that this is an energy that comes, but it also goes. It's not as pervasive, but this can be one of those important sort of activating moments, if you will, when we take into consideration these larger trends that are going to be coming up. And also keep in mind that it is this month that we are going to gain powerful glimpses into 2021. It isn't just about what's happening right now, but when you think about the fact that in 2021, Saturn and Uranus are going to square each other. They're going to be dancing in square. The issues that show up now very quickly and also may find some resolution or at least some temporary resolution. You may also see some of this sense of resolution showing up later this month with that new moon in Taurus that is going to be happening. That new moon that happens two weeks after the super moon um, is going to be hand in hand, conjunct Uranus, square Saturn. And that is also going to be a glimpse into what it is that we have coming up ahead in 2021. But this month is so powerful in that regard. So as much as it feels like we are becoming aware of where it is that more people are wanting change or we're becoming aware of how it is we want to understand whether it is prosperity, whether it's self-worth, or whether it is access to money and resources, our ability to create prosperity for ourselves, where more and more of us are wanting to understand that and wanting to be more independent in that, that desire is going to come right to the surface for the collective. Very likely some event this week is going to bring that right to the surface. And then we're going to start flushing it out and changing things a little bit by the time we get to the new moon. But whatever arises now, it may not be as um, pervasive or as much a social force just yet the way that it will be in 2021. So very important to pay attention to what is happening with the collective right now, because this is exactly what we are going to be working on, looking at further developing, further understanding about our collective and our human experience uh, much more fully once we navigate into 2021. So we've got this intense start of the week, right? Even within us, chances are we are going to be feeling a sense of wanting to take action, perhaps having erratic reactions. Uh, very classically, astrologers have said that when Mars squares Uranus, this can represent accidents as well. So it's important to be super careful uh, with this energy where possible. And I would say, especially where it comes to electricity, because of all that Uranian Aquarius energy that has to do with electricity, um, where it comes to electricity that's running in the ground because of that Taurus connection there. These are areas where we do want to be careful in our own lives as part of our own individual experience. But for all that, once we get past the emotion of the super moon midweek, we'll start to feel the energy just uh, calm a little bit, which is going to be quite welcome, I think, for a lot of people by the time we navigate late into the week. So what is happening late in the week? Well, first of all, right around Friday, Venus goes into shadow. I will have Venus retrograde special horoscope, so be on the lookout for that uh, in the second part of this week. So I will save that conversation for then, because I got a lot to say about that. That is going to be, um, and this is going to be very significant, this Venus retrograde season, given that it is happening in the energy of Gemini. Gemini has to do with the ways in which we communicate with each other. There are some uh, who now say that the internet is actually under the providence of Gemini because it's a, a regular tool that we use. Once something stops being the next thing and the new thing, and it becomes more about what we engage in every day, it becomes the providence of Gemini as opposed to Aquarius, where it comes to the ways in which we connect and communicate with each other. And so this is going to bring our need to be connected, uh, especially online, our need for mental connections, for stimulation on a mind level, uh, and the ways in which we are essentially social creatures 
all of that is going to come to the surface and the desire on a heart level is going to be very strong in people as we navigate forward. Again, I'll have a whole lot more to say about that. But on the same day, Mercury will change signs, moving into the sign of Aries. So it's been quite the Mercury retrograde season. That's over now, right? Mercury left shadow a couple weeks back, but it is now that Mercury truly does step into new ground. While Mercury is moving through the sign of Pisces, it is feeling, even if there wasn't Mercury retrograde, which there was, that in and of itself can make it feel like a Mercury retrograde. You add an actual Mercury retrograde, it amplifies the energy that much more. But I do love that just before Mercury does leave um, the sign of Pisces, in the first half of the week and under the light of the supermoon, Mercury will speak in harmony with Jupiter and with Pluto. That gives me a whole lot of hope. That tells me that we find people to talk to. We find ways to make sense of very intense energies. We find ways to understand how it is that we are going to integrate and be better for what is transforming within us now, individually and collectively as well. But as we get to the end of the week and Mercury leaves the sign of Pisces, I think a lot of us are gonna be seeing things more clearly and things could change very quickly. Whenever a planet does move into a cardinal sign, it does suggest a new phase. It is certainly, astrologically speaking, the start of a new season. Um, and given that with Mercury moving through the sign of Pisces and the connection that Mercury has uh, to health, there are some wonderful astrologers who have spoken on this. I was having a conversation with my friend Andy that you guys know about Mercury connected to health. I spoke about that a few weeks ago. Uh, Akila Moon, who you have seen on my channel before, she did a wonderful video on the connection that Mercury has to health as well. And so Mercury in Pisces, right? And Pisces being such an energy of um, pervasiveness, right? It has been one of the indicators, just one of the indicators that have spoken to uh, the collective concern that we've had around health issues. So I think we're going to get some fresh perspectives and things could change uh, and start to look different to us once Mercury moves into the sign of Aries. But keep in mind as well, that this could make people a lot more determined, a lot more vocal. It raises individual voices and makes them very loud as well. So we may see some of that in the weeks ahead, but at least in the immediacy, as soon as Mercury changes signs, reaches out and connects in harmony with Saturn. So I just love this energy for the way in which it stabilizes our minds individually. But I think the other layer of this, if you think about Saturn, newly in the sign of Aquarius. Earlier in the week, we've got all that heightened Aquarian energy with Mars speaking with Uranus, at least now. This is going to be when either it's messaging, either it's the media or the more personal one-on-one -on -one conversations that we're having, help us to feel a greater sense of stability and help us to feel that in a very practical way, things can get better for all of us and for the collective. What I love about this week for us, well, look, it is eventful, right? It is a really eventful week. I would say given the very strong energies playing out as we start this week, as much as you can, try to understand what it means to take the best of care of you. And that doesn't mean uh, closing ourselves off to the entire world, but there are ways in which we can find a healthy balance to ensure that we're helping ourselves and empowering ourselves on levels of mind and energy and emotion. And that is gonna be so necessary because how strong the energy is in the first part of the week, it's very easy to get very caught up in it, to feel ourselves on a roller coaster of some kind if we allow ourselves to get caught up in every minutia. But I also understand that Awareness ultimately is a type of empowerment as well. What I am saying is if we can practice self-care at the same time, 
be that much better able to navigate towards the later part of the week when that genuine sense of stability and empowerment come. But for all that, I do think a lot of the energy this week, all the air energy now, is essentially going to be a reminder as to how much we need each other, how much we truly are social creatures, and how beautiful it is to know that there is a powerful interconnection playing out within us all. And it is a week like this that reminds us to prioritize that, to either care for each other or at least talk to each other, communicate to each other. That in and of itself can be a force of healing now. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to nadiashaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and so much more all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Saturn special horoscopes are already in the superstar space. They're also available on my website, nadiashaw.com. And the Venus retrograde special horoscopes are going to be made available first to superstars in the superstar space later on this week. I hope you absolutely love them. And they will, of course, also be available for download on my website as well. Thank you for your trust in my interpretation of the sky. It means so much to me, thank you. Thank you for your well wishes uh, last week. I really appreciate that. That was a hard week for me. Um, I know that my friend Yaves, who I spoke of, his family wanted me to extend uh, their gratitude to you as well. They said that uh, they could tell based on your feedback and your comments that their family and Yavez received a lot of your love and light and prayers. And for that, they were truly very grateful. So if you remember last week, I spoke about the artist to the cover of my books, he passed away. And, um, and I'm so grateful to have known him. He was very near and dear to my heart and I'm grateful that he blessed my work as he did. So Prayers to the Sky uh, is still top three or top four now, but it was a number one new release. It stayed number one for over two weeks, uh, but is still up there. So thank you so much for making this a number one new release. Prayers to the Sky is now available wherever books are sold and online. On Amazon, it was a number one new release, as was The Body and the Cosmos when it first came out back in December, and this is Yavez's art as well. I have advanced copies available uh, for my next book, The Universe is Wise and Loving, Volume 1, The Nodes of the Moon. And if you purchase the advanced copy directly from me, you get over $200 worth of free gifts that I hope you absolutely love, including access to an online event that I will be having uh, in June on the changing of the nodes. The nodes are moving into, um, well, the North Node is moving into Gemini, the South Node is moving into Sagittarius, and it was the great uh, astrologer, 11th century astrologer Al Biruni, who believed that the nodes were exalted in this position. So in that class, I'll be talking about what this means, not only for the collective, but also uh, what that means for each and every sign. We're gonna go through the signs. So I would love to see you there. You get access to that uh, as a free gift when you get this advanced copy of The Universe is Wise and Loving. And if uh, you can't join us live, you can get the download and the class uh, pass sells for itself for $35, which is more than the advanced copy of the book costs. So I hope you love that. And The Universe is Wise and Loving Volume 1 will be available wherever books are sold uh, in August, August 22nd. Well, thank goodness for the online world because I got a lot of online events coming up. I will be very busy. I do have Synchronicity University. The next session, the spring session starting this 
coming weekend right around the corner. You can choose your own tuition rate. This is the last week to choose your own tuition rate as low as $5 a class. There's also a limited number of tuition uh, scholarships available as well. And so I wanted to be sensitive to the fact that there may be people who'd really like to join, but even that low tuition rate might be challenging. And so whether it is that you want a scholarship, whether it is that you want the super low price of choosing your tuition rate, uh, all of that is available at synchronicityuniversity.com. This coming Saturday, uh, we are going to be looking at retrograde planets in the astrology chart, much requested class. And so I'm really excited. We'll go through each of the planets one at a time and talk about uh, what it means if you have that planet retrograde in your chart. And then the following week, we're doing introduction to numerology. I'm really excited about that. And I actually will have, uh, I'm hoping to put together some surprise in regards to that as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Numerology is something I have used in my own life personally um, and have loved. And I use it as part of my own spiritual practice. So it'll be a lot of fun to teach that to you guys. And then we're going to also have classes on Chiron and aspect to planets in the astrology chart. We're going to have Venus in aspect in the astrology chart and Mars through the signs and houses. So there's lots to look forward to a really fun uh, session coming up and I look forward to walking that with you. But I said I have other events as well. Astrology Rise in Costa Rica.com is now an online party. It is going to be a week long online party. It is going to be super fun. Kaipacha, who is an incredible astrologer and is the organizer for this event, is arranging everything and it's got the same amazing uh, faculty that you were going to get in person. Now you get us online. I'm going to be teaching fully four classes over the course of those days. So you will get to see me online um, teaching in all kinds of different things. You'll get to see the one and only Rick Levine teaching as well and Maurice Fernandez, world-renowned astrologer Maurice Fernandez. We, of course, have Kaipacha. We've got uh, Ari Wolf, Timothy Halloran, Christina Caudell, and Julia Simas. So there's amazing people to look forward to and learn from and be a part of this immersive event. There is going to be like an online dance party and just all kinds of fun. So I think it is going to be such a unique and special experience. And I look forward to meeting you there at astrologyrisingcostarica.com. And my event with Astrology Toronto is now going to be online as well. That is taking place uh, in May. And there's lots of other events I have also. So be on the lookout for that. You can check out the events page on my website as different things move into the online space. And finally, I do want to let you know that my partnership with Cosmogram is ongoing and you can get my interpretation of your natal chart at any time by visiting the link in the description below. Uh, you'll be navigated to the Cosmogram website. Uh, They're the one who take care of everything. They process all the orders and they generate a report and get it delivered to you by email within hours of your purchase. And so if you wanted to know what I think about what sign your sun is in, what house your sun is in, what aspects your sun makes and all the different planets in your chart, uh, have a look at that. Again, link in the description below. Uh, and that was definitely so much a labor of love uh, to do all those different sections, to pour um, my, really my love of astrology into this report. And it's gotten such amazing feedback. It was so popular as soon as it came out. I know Cosmogram and I was very surprised. So thank you for making it such a hit. And it is still available. Uh, on their website, link in the description below so that you can know what I think of your natal chart and all the wonderful things going on there. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your trust in my interpretation of the sky. You, my audience, you mean so much to me and uh, your presence, your love, uh, all of it, just thank you. You bless my life in so many ways. And to be some part of your sacred journey, it just means so much to me. 
Well, thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.